Okay, we're going to talk about Leopold Aschenbrenner's new paper, Situational Awareness. This has been making the rounds. A number of people have asked me about it. So it is uh, fairly long. It's 165 pages, and uh, it argues that we are in the midst of an AGI super explosion or an ASI uh, explosion, so that we're going to essentially achieve artificial superintelligence in the near future, and that that's going to have a compound effect. Uh, and he makes four points in that paper. So it's divided into the topics of the ASI explosion, then the infrastructure push that's resulting, and he kind of uses that as evidence for the explosion. He makes the point that ASI is going to be able to uh, evade human control. And then he kind of segues into talking about it as a national security threat. And he makes a comparison to nuclear weapons, as we're basically on the verge of a nuclear scale uh, risk event for the human civilization. And so specifically, he wants the government to take over a security for AI labs. So those are the four topics. Uh, what do I think of it in general? Well, I think he's got some things right. Like, for example, the scaling. Uh, we're definitely seeing that there's tremendous scaling going on. Uh, and I do think we're going to achieve artificial superintelligence, meaning uh, AI models that are smarter generally than uh, almost every human being uh, in the near future. He has it as like 2027. We are pretty close to that now. So uh, I think that's doable. I don't agree on the time frame for the AGI super uh, explosion, which is basically intelligence explosion where you have the AIs then improving themselves and that that just spirals out of control. I do think that that will happen in a longer term. I don't think we're going to see our, what's called in AI alignment a hard takeoff. When we talk about uh, the alignment problem, his background is he comes from OpenAI and uh, he worked in their super alignment team, which is alignment for super intelligence. I don't really like OpenAI's approach to alignment and I don't think that it was one that was going to be successful um, in uh, in kind of the longer term. In fact, I think it's actually been outstripped by other models like Anthropic's constitutional AI. And there's a reason for that, which is that uh, if you assume that artificial superintelligence will evade human control, which I think it will, uh, you know, it's really hard to control something that's smarter than yourself and much more capable, then Grounding your safety mechanism in control is a bad idea because it's just it's a landscape of conflict. So uh, Laura Scheibling and I wrote a paper on that uh, called The Elephant in the Room, Why uh, AI Safety Demands Diverse Teams. And it's essentially about that, about the idea that um, you should really come up with an alignment framework that expects that you're going to be uh, peers at best or that you will be in a, a position of uh, inferior capability um, you know, likelihood. And instead, what you should do is attempt to find uh, an alignment that forms an actual alignment, some sort of partnership, so that when the control mechanisms are gone, your AI systems have reason to cooperate with you. That's not the open AI approach. Uh, it's firmly control based. It's very grounded in how do we keep AI as a tool for humans. I don't think that's going to work well in the long run. And I think that starting on that path actually frames you in what we call the, uh, a subject-object uh, relationship, which means that there's inherent conflict built into the relationship and that that's going to cause problems later on. But that's the perspective that he operates from. And then the final point is where he looks at the national security threat. I don't think that nuclear weaponry is, the, is a great analogy. And I think it leads him down some paths that don't work very well. So... In the next couple of videos, what I'm going to do over this week is break down those specific aspects and talk about them. Uh, but that's kind of a nutshell of what that paper is about. So if somebody asks you about what do you think about um, situation awareness paper, it's worth reading. It is very long. Uh, I will put a link to it in the video and we will talk more about it later.